is a wild, frenzied dance of life, orgiastic and animalistic. For his craft, Stravinsky imagined the dancers waving like bundles of leaves in the wind during the orchestral convulsions at the beginning of his piece, and stomping like Indians trying to put out a prairie fire during the latter part of it. On other occasions, Stravinsky described the dance in slightly different but related terms, a frenzied dance of the people drunk with spring. The people dance passionately on the earth, sanctifying it and becoming one with it. The first part ends with the wild dancing out on the earth of the people drunk with spring. The sage's benediction is as a signal for an eruption of rhythm. Each covering his head runs in spirals, pouring forth in numbers like the new energies of nature. It is the dance of the earth. An opening is cleared for the eldest and wisest who enters at the head of a religious procession. The games stop and the people wait, trembling for the blessing of the earth. The eldest makes a sign to kiss the earth and everyone dances, stomping the earth. A whole tone ostinato runs through the entire scene. In the first of the two main sections, a whole tone melody based on 0246 is heard amid irregularly spaced C-oriented chords. The longer second section is dominated by a melody based on the Dorian tetrachord, yet another of the many we have heard. As the music reaches its accumulative climax, the big C-oriented chords return for one final explosion, even as the whole tone ostinato and the Dorian melody persist. Throughout the ballet, whole tone melodies and harmonies are associated with wild animalistic dances like this one. An explosion of musical and choreographic activity, a wild dance. Drum rolls and timpani and bass drum create a seismic underpinning, a deep disturbance, augmented by the ascending whole tone ostinato in contrabasses and contrabassoon. A new whole tone melody in fanfare style with thick planing accompaniment in massed winds and brass punctuated irregularly by loud tutti chords. The atmosphere is feral and ferocious, wild and untamed, orgiastic and ecstatic. The opening block features a huge, thickly orchestrated dissonant chord, tutti fortissimo sforzando, that punctuates it at irregular intervals. The scene both begins and ends with this chord, which thus functions as a sort of tonic for the scene. The chord is oriented towards C, G, filled in as C, E, F sharp, G, a C major chord with a dissonant distractor. A second chord, basically a D major chord, initiates the main melody of the block, a whole tone melody which is encrusted with planing parallel thirds and with repeated notes from the D major chord. This melody, which I'm calling the Earth Fanfare, is the first clear instance of our fourth principal melody type, 0246, as an emblem of the wild dance. In this scene, an orgiastic dance of life evoking the animalistic and subhuman. The Earth Fanfare melody bears important affinities with other melodies and melody types from earlier scenes, most notably the fanfare melody from Abduction and Rival Tribes. In all three cases, the melody is scored for horns, augmented by trumpets in Abduction and Earth, a brass fanfare. In the earlier scenes, the melody was an emblem of specifically male triumph, victory over the women, and victory over a rival tribe of men. Here, the celebration extends to all the people, male and female. Throughout the block and throughout the entire scene, we hear an ostinato rumbling along in the bass register. It consists of steady 16th note F sharps in the timpani and a recurring three beat figure in contrabasses and violas. The three beat figure consists of a whole tone ascent F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, over a repeated offbeat C. The pedal F sharp, the repeated C, and the whole tone fragment all belong to the same whole tone collection. The melody, 
D, E, F sharp, G sharp, also belongs to this whole tone collection, as do the roots of the two big chords, C and D. This is very much a whole tone moment in the piece. Block two is mostly a continuation of the previous block with all of the principal elements intact. The big C-centered chord, the D major chord, the 0246 melody with plenty accompaniment, the pedal on F sharp, and the three beat ostinato. As noted, all of these elements are part of a single whole tone collection. The only thing new is a brief melodic fragment, E flat, B flat, a premonition of melodies to come. This is not a whole tone element. As a perfect fourth frame, it will be filled in the usual way as a Dorian tetrachord. In its unfilled state as it is here, it evokes the hunting call from abduction, yet another link between these scenes. In block three, the D major chord and the 0246 melody both drop out, and the E flat B flat fanfare intensifies. Soon it will take over as the framework for the principal melody of the scene. In the meantime, the low pedals and ostinatos continue, as do the punctuating chords on C, which also come closer and closer together. In this longer second section of the scene, the whole tone fanfare melody is gone, as are the punctuating chords. The Dorian melody, of which the first section gave some hint, takes over entirely, building from a soft level to a shattering climax of accumulation. As the end of the scene approaches, the C-oriented chords return. In block four, the harmony layer continues mostly as before, but with some intensifications. The timpani pedal on F sharp has now become an alternation of F sharp and C. The three note ostinato F sharp, G sharp, A sharp is extended into a full whole tone scale F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C, D, E. We continue to have a sense of poised equilibrium between F sharp and C with the regular 16th note and quarter note pulsations that reinforce the unvarying 3 4 meter. The melody takes the perfect fourth from the previous block and fills it in with passing notes as a Dorian tetrachord, B flat, C, D flat, E flat. The perfect fourth frame is stated several times in hunting call fashion, then filled in in descending motion, like virtually all of the Dorian melodies in the ballet, downward toward the earth. I'll call this one the earth melody. The earth melody resonates closely with a number of earlier Dorian melodies at the same pitch level, especially melodies prominent in augers of spring. In augers, that particular Dorian frame was associated first with a masculine military march, then with the young women, and finally with what later becomes a solemn religious procession. Here, in Dances of the Earth, the same frame moves into its fourth expressive mode as an emblem of a wild orgiastic dance. The earth melody is extremely simple in construction with only four notes, and these are arranged in four different three-note cells. The cells are ordered and positioned in irregular, unpredictable ways, giving a sense of off-balance agitation to the music. But there are deeper regularities also, an underlying hypermeter that divides the music into three two-measure groups. In 
block five, the harmonic layer, with its F-sharp C pedals and its whole tone ostinato, continues as before, as does the Dorian melody in triplets, B-flat C, D-flat, E-flat. As the texture thickens, these strands are joined by a new melody, a transposition of the Dorian melody up a perfect fifth, F, G, A-flat, B-flat. The transposed earth melody is heard sometimes in parallel fifths with the original earth melody, and more conspicuously in a new rhythmic presentation in shattering sixteenth notes. The same type of melody at the same pitch level was featured earlier in the ballet, most conspicuously as the men's melody from Augers. Both the transposed earth melody and the young men's melody from Augers relate, via dyad-preserving voice leading, to melodies from the ritual of abduction. All of these melodies operate in a male-oriented military mode. The texture continues to thicken in block six as the music mounts toward one of its accumulative climaxes. The previous layers and strands continue as before. Now a new transposition of the earth melody is piled on top continuing and culminating a chain of T7 transpositions. At this new pitch level, the earth melody forms significant links with other melodies in the ballet, both earlier in part one and later in part two. These melodies share a fanfare quality amid wild dances. The dyad CD will emerge as a particularly significant motific element as the ballet continues. In block seven, previously discussed layers continue to grind away with ever greater intensity. In block eight, the final block of the scene, the opening chords return even as the earth melody continues at its original transposition level. The earth melody is E flat oriented. The chords are C oriented. We thus have a balance of those two pitch centers as we have had at many previous points in part one, most conspicuously in augers of spring. If it were necessary to choose a pitch center for part one as a whole, it would be E flat with a consistent admixture of C. In terms of the temporal unfolding of the ballet, here at the end of part one, we come to the end of a symbolic year. It is now winter and the end of the daylight hours. In a moment, part two will begin with the stage in darkness. Part two takes place entirely at night, ending right before dawn, and traces a second seasonal cycle from spring to winter and a second life cycle from birth to death. <laughs> 